Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. Councillor shot and killed in St. Catherine. Rising temperature affecting food production. And later in sports, host countries secure wins on opening day of the FIFA, World, FIFA Women's World Cup. Thank you for joining us. I'm Shimela Pullen. Here are the details. We begin with a developing story. PNP councillor for the South Bar Division in Portmore St. Catherine, Ainsley Parkins, was murdered this morning. TVJ News understands the incident happened sometime before 10 a.m. in a community in the division. The councillor was traveling in his vehicle when he was shot. We observed three bullet holes in the windscreen. He was taken to hospital where he was pronounced dead. Investigators are currently on the scene as well as key players of the Portmore Municipal Corporation. We'll have more on this developing story in subsequent newscasts. Meanwhile, the People's National Party has condemned the incident. In a statement, the party says Councillor Parkins was an outstanding public servant. Portmore Mayor Leon Thomas also reacted to the murder. It is really a sad day. Um, in Jamaica and a Sunday for Portmore. Inslee was a very, very good counselor who always look out for his people and represent his people well. He also, um, this morning, was given the task to take the summer workers into Southborough to capture some data and uh, Upon his arrival and leaving, it seems like the gunmen pounce on him. It is a situation that the entire staff of the Municipal Cooperation is mourning and deep sad. Two brothers were killed execution style in Long Bay, Lilliput, St. James last night. According to our sources, the incident happened sometime around 11.40. The men have been identified as 16-year-old Neo Samuels and his brother, 22-year-old Gregory Forbes. Their house was then set ablaze. It's unclear if their deaths were related to any gang conflict within the parish. Residents in Taws Meadows St. Catherine are upset over what they say is the unfair targeting of their community. They say for the past three weeks, as early as 4 a.m., their homes have been raided by members of the JDF looking for wanted men. They need to tap take set pan away. They come every minute, they kick off the people in the world. I want to take out 14 year old and 12 year old out of us. And all the people in my tell them say, if pity them at 12 and 14 year old, they still have to take them out of their house to go with them. For what? The Joint Anti Gang Task Force carried out an operation yesterday in search of Damar Williams, otherwise called Demon or Kai Kai, who they believe is hiding in the community. Damar is said to be a known violence producer and one of eight ex escapees from the Black River lockup in St. Elizabeth on June 19. We go to another developing story. Proceedings at several of the nation's courts have been disrupted as prosecutors from the DPP's office have taken industrial action. The issue stems from a letter which was written to the Finance Minister, Dr. Nigel Clark, about concerns relating to the salary of prosecutors. They are upset that today the Minister of Finance has not responded. It's understood that Western Regional Gun Court, the Supreme Court, courts in St. Catherine and Clarendon have been most affected. We'll have more on this developing story in subsequent newscasts. With temperatures rising and little rain in the forecast, the agriculture sector is bracing for the impact. Agriculture Minister Floyd Green says food and crop production are at risk. He was speaking on TVJ's Smile Jamaica today. Double trouble. First it was drought, now it's the heat. Agriculture Minister Floyd Green says the rising temperature is putting crops and livestock under great pressure. As a result, food production is affected. And it's having a 
negative effect, quite frankly, on just production, all over production, whether it be especially on our vegetable lines, which um, suffer tremendously from elevated heat stress. You do have, with heat, increased amount of pests, which is something that farmers, again, <coughs> sorry, have to look out for and have to look to more inputs to try and treat with pest control, which again sends up the price, which oftentimes have them reduce the amount of land that they put under production. He's concerned there are too many farmers doing outdoor farming. It leaves them to the ravages of drought and also ravages of intense rain periods. So we're looking to extend our irrigation coverage. So we have a wonderful project now in Essex Valley, that is South Manchester, South St. Elizabeth. We're looking to bring about 800 acres under irrigated water supply. That is happening, there are no lane pipes. We have another program in South Clarendon, Parnassus, Amity Hall in St. Catherine, another 400 hectares under irrigated water supply. And the big one that we want to get done is in um, Pedro Plains, mm -hmm. right, which we We've earmarked, identified, looking to roll out a 200 million US project that would take water from the Black River and deal with the plains of Pijo. The solution, he says, requires a number of measures. Among the plans being considered is to expand the country's irrigation system. We're going to look at trucking of water, but we're also going to look at rehabilitating water catchment areas. Mm -hmm. You see, what is happening, <clears throat> especially when the rain comes, oftentimes it goes to waste because we don't have appropriate catchment areas in our production zones to help the farmers <clears throat> during this elevated heat. So we're looking at, we've identified about six areas to do some water catchment. We also have to look at the strains of plants that we're using, you mm -hmm. know, the seeds. So we're looking at more drought resistant quality seeds. So we've identified about $20 million that we're going to be distributing some vegetable seeds to get our vegetable lines back up. Already the ministry has rolled out its drought mitigation program. Kerry and Simpson, TVJ News. A lack of rainfall is the cause of Somerset Falls drying up in Portland. The Water Resources Authority say, says this is due to ongoing drought. Managing Director Jeffrey Marshall was speaking on TVJ's Smell Jamaica today. Usually when you can have two sources for a river where it's either groundwater fed, so you have the groundwater discharge that feeds, feeds the river, and you see that in rivers like the White River and Rio Bueno and Rio Cobre, White River, Rio Bueno in St. Anne, of course, where it's groundwater discharge, the blue hole rises up. But in Portland, with not as many limestone, um, underlying limestone blue holes, it's a lot of the basal aquaclude or rocks that don't really store water. Mr. Marshall says it is not the first time the falls have dried up, adding that not much can be done to address the situation. It would be important for us to be, to be more efficient users of the water resources that we do have. Um, we, and, you know, we would have to find diverse sources of income so that if the water is in there for the river, what else can we do in that regard? I'm not the professional in that aspect. But when it comes to water usage in overall, where we can see that these droughts may be happening with more frequency, then we have to say, what can we do to increase water storage for usage? What can we do to have more efficient water use of the water that we do have? Where, how can we find more resilient sources of water? Uh, but when it comes to sources like Somerset Falls, which rely on the rainfall, you know, that's all we can do, really. The Health Ministry is reporting a further increase in COVID-19 cases. Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton says it's a situation the ministry continues to monitor. The details in this report. Last week, the Minister of Health saw some 100 COVID-related hospitalizations. Less than a week after that disclosure, some hospitals are seeing at least 130 hospitalizations daily. Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton says persons are being treated for confirmed and suspected cases. Positive cases just under half of that isolation ward occupancy was averaging about 20% of available space last week. It's about 30% this week. Um, persons classified as moderately Ill, Ill moved from 13 to 22 in the space of a week. We have two severely ill, no critically ill. Um, in addition to lab results, confirmed cases increasing, there's also increase in hospitalization. Dr. Tufton says the increase in the positivity rate means the impact on hospitals will be greater. 
General bed occupancy, that is for all patients, remain high. Western Regional Health Authority and SARA, over 90%. 60 to 70% in NERA and, and SARA. Um, I'm sure you know what those are. Right? Western Regional Health, Southern Regional Health, Southeast Regional Health, right? Um, and KPH, Spanish Town, and Linstead are over 90%. While there have been no recent confirmed deaths, vulnerable groups should be on high alert. General thrust of policy in Jamaica, as is the case in the world, is that we're learning to live with COVID. And the, 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 the variant strains that are there now are not considered the most lethal, in fact. Uh, they are considered relatively mild. But if you are 75 with a heart condition, or 50 as the case may be, or recovering cancer patient or renal patient, then a COVID virus could amplify that and create your demise, which is why we have to recognize that it's not something to take lightly. It's time for a break. Stay with us. More stories when we return. Welcome back to the Midday News. Over $30 billion is owed to the National Water Commission for services it has rendered to customers. That's according to NWC President Mark Barnett. Mr. Barnett, who was speaking on the morning agenda on Power 106, says the issue of collection of monies owed has been a long-standing one. He says the NWC is hoping to collect at least a third of the $30 billion which it owed. We are mindful of the circumstances surrounding how some of the debts uh, were, were accumulated, uh, the receivables, if you will, were accumulated. And so it is likely that we would have to write off probably another third, and then we will try to figure out the next third in terms of whether we sell it or, you know, we have to reconsider and write off an additional amount. But certainly it would be for, for safety based on the information that, I currently have one based on some of the actuarial assessment. We're likely to write off about 33%. It's now time for the Business Minute. Few businesses think the local economy will worsen over the next year. According to the latest Business Confidence Survey, 21% of businesses surveyed believed the local financial situation will be affected by a number of factors including crime. Head of Market Research Limited, Don Anderson, says this is down from 27% in the first quarter. 100 businesses were surveyed between April and June. On the international scene, US-based streaming platform Netflix has removed its basic plan in the US and UK. This basic subscription allowed users to watch shows and movies without commercials as the company tries to draw more subscribers to its ad-supported tier. On its website, the company says the $9.99 US per month basic plan would no longer be available for new or rejoining members. Users who are already on the plan can remain until they change plans or cancel their account. Netflix launched a $7 US dollar per month option with commercials last November in 12 markets, including the US, as an alternative to ad-free plans. It was designed to attract more customers and add a new revenue stream as competition for online viewers intensified. And that's the Business Minute. I'm Shane Masters. Tax Time now for the top regional and international stories. In the region, Concerns are mounting over the safety in St. Vincent and the Grenadines following a shooting in the Harbour Club area of Kingstown yesterday. Five people were killed while two others were injured in the attack. In a video statement posted on his social media early this morning, Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez asserted the public that the police will bring the perpetrators to justice. On the international scene, at least six people were killed, several others injured and hundreds arrested as anti-government protesters in Kenya continued their demonstration over the high cost of living and tax hikes. It's being led by the opposition. Dozens of schools and businesses across the country remain closed. 
and a federal judge has dismissed former U.S. President Donald Trump's request for a new trial in a civil case in which a jury found him liable for sexual abusing and defaming columnist E. Jean Carroll. Trump was ordered to pay $5 million in damages, which he argued was excessive. But the judge ruled that the jury's May 9 verdict was not a miscarriage of justice. And those are the top regional and international stories. I'm Karian Simpson. We head to a quick break. When we come back, we'll have your midday sports support with Jordan Fort.